spent about at least two years playing red ball. And finally, his hands got so good that we said, ah, hell, let's have him play a little orange ball. And uh, Stefan is actually going to be turning nine years old in two days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it up to you guys to tell me at the end of this talk which color ball we should be playing and what size four we should be playing on. So you guys can tell me all that at the end. So, getting back to uh, our two adaptive players here, what excited me about doing this talk today was after I finished going to the physical education college, along with around the world a little bit, end up in Egypt, uh, came to the United States to go to this really amazing school in North Carolina. Guys, go to four. That there's a back court, a mid court, and a front court. And I think when we look at the game today, we realize that there's actually, when you look at the back court, you can really look at the back court in three different areas in terms of a neutral area, maybe just on or behind the baseline, a defensive area when you get pushed off the baseline, and then when you move inside the baseline, maybe an offensive area. So, the types of shots that we have players hit from the different areas of the court, and this is going to be important when Stefan steps on the court, we want to try and help players understand that every shot that's hit has a variety of different spins and speeds. So if I'm back in a defensive area behind the court, maybe I hit what's called a loop shot. And a loop shot is a ball that's hit five feet and higher. So this type of ball that goes up gives me lots of time and draws the ball up and high into my opponent's strike zone. If I'm in this area of the court, kind of more of a neutral area, maybe I hit a ball that's three to five feet above the net, and that's called an arc. And then when I'm into an offensive area, maybe I hit a drive. So those are the we're going to use those terminologies. We're going to talk about loops, arcs, and drives. So I'm going to ask Frank and Martin to hit only loops and arcs, no drives to begin with, unless you get drawn into the court. Alright, so stop for a second. What kind of balls have they hit so far? Mainly a few loops. Let's bring it down a little, guys, and let's hit, try and hit mainly arcs. Alright, stop there for a second. So I'm just going to take your spot for a minute. Martin, I'm going to feed from position two. And, and what I want you to do is, if you feel like you're in a neutral position, hit an arc. If you're in a defensive position, hit a loop. And if you're inside the court, hit a drive. Stefan, would you do me a huge favor, mate, and pull the practice hits back a little bit? Cheers, mate. So good. All right, so you tell me what you've got. All right, what was that? Drive. Drive. Okay, so let's try and look at that again. What was that? Okay, somewhere in there, right? It's a little grey, isn't it? Right, what's this one? Nice shot, mate. What kind of shot, guys? Loop. Loop. And then what about this one? Drive. Ah, crap. You guys probably don't know this, but Martin's father played at the final Wimbledon. Mm -hmm. This guy Ross. What was it? 1963? What year was it? 62. 62. No prizes for me, I guess. 63. Oh, 62. Uh, before I was born. Not before Weston was born, by the way. Okay, so that's our terminology. Uh, the other thing that you're going to hear me talk about a little bit is you're going to hear me talk a little bit about the anatomy of a tennis ball. And uh, I used this because the guys really liked it, was that when you look at a tennis ball and think about it like it's a head, it has a chin, a nose, and a forehead. So when he's hitting arcs and loops, what type of the ball part of the ball do you hit predominantly? Chin. Chin. You guys are fast learners. Alright, Stefan, do me a huge favor. If you jump on that side over there and hit a little bit with Martin. You warmed up. You warmed up. Alright, so Stefan. Is that uh, he's going to do the uh, he's going to play with Martin and he's going to show you a, a, an exercise called the hit and hop exercise. Uh, come on up into the court a little bit. 
So I don't know if you guys have any juniors that when they warm up short court, they look like they have super glue on the top of their feet. Do you have any of those? <laughs> no? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. So we, we designed this drill, thanks to Loud Bank, so that the people in the back row over there can hear. You ready? A little louder. That's it. Fantastic. Round of applause, please. Thank you. Okay, so this is what we call the hit and the hop drill. Uh, the hit and the hop drill basically is just to get the kids kind of activate their feet a little bit so that they also feel the rhythm of the rally a little bit. So Stefan's excellent at that drill. So the other thing was in the beginning, slide back to the baseline, Stefan. In the beginning, you notice the guys hitting to certain parts of the court. And uh, if you can see on Stefan's side, I stayed up all night last night and did an art project. So it was clear enough for you guys. But I've got five distinct targets. Short news score is one. Deep news score is two. Middle of the back court is three. Deep ad court is four. Short ad court is five. So just to give you an idea of uh, I'm going to throw in a couple of extra targets over here if that's okay. For you, Mark, now make sure that you uh, make sure you don't get knocked over. That one over there. Okay, that's the one. I, I have a first one right here. Right, so Stefan, when the ball, before the ball bounces, can you call the number that you're going to hit to? Can you do that for me? By the way, Stefan's very comfortable in front of big groups. He can present it in front of 300 of his peers at his school about a couple of months back, and this guy was a superstar. Unbelievable. So now he's launched in it. We're looking for any kind of endorsement contract if you have to. <laughs> and he is. All right, here we go. Ready? Alright, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I just wasn't. <laughs> well, that was a, that was a nasty little one right there, mate. That wasn't a two. Let's see if you can hit it right on the dot. We're going to sign you up right now for the Adidas. Life contract with Adidas if you can hit one of the dots. Gary, is that okay? There <laughs> we go, mate. Now, how accurate he is right now to me is not really, that's not really my main concern. I just want him conceptually to understand how he might combine certain shots. So one pattern that we might work on is we might work on a, on a short angle and then a down the line shot. So if I were to uh, slide over there with our guy Stefan, all right, Martin, you can just stay right there, Martin. Stefan, let's work on that uh, number one target for a minute. Can we do that? All right, we did a little work on this earlier, and we, we agreed that you need a little extra spin to hit this shot. So, are you ready? Number one. Tell you what, it's worth, it's worth a free soda. Actually, that's not very healthy. How about milkshake? It's worth a milkshake if you can take out number one on the next three shots. Ready? Three, four, three. Last one. So we have this saying that Stefan taught me in French. What is it? Pardon le filet is not in the net in French. We got that? Do that again. Pardon le filet. It means not in the net. Best tip I ever got in high school was when my, uh, my high school coach said, the net is your first opponent. So Stefan reminded me of that the other day when he said, oh, that's pardon le filet. I was like, Love that. We're going to design a game around Pardon de Filet. So that's what we're going to teach you in a second. Right, number one and then number four. Can you do that? One and four. One. 
Oh, we've got to work on that. So what we do a lot of times, though, is if I'm in a... Ready? Four. Getting there. He's going to, I can feel he's improving. So what we do a lot of times is if we're in a kind of a live ball situation and we realize that a player is struggling with something technical, then what we do is we start to try to find a technical solution for that technical problem. Anybody else use that approach? Hands up. Oh, everybody. Okay, it's a great approach. All right, one four. You ready? A little bit more speed. A little more. Okay, got it. Now go four. Four. All right. Now, are you ready to teach them the game, pardon le pile? Alright, so pardon le pile means not in the net in French. And we designed the game with the scoring, which discourages you from hitting the ball in the net. Penalizes you a little bit more for hitting in the net, but not as much for missing long, right? So when we start this game, we begin with 11 points all. And you can gain points by hitting Clean winner, score time any. Three points, and what about a forced error? Plus one. And what about if you miss long or wide? Minus one, and what about if you miss the net? And how many points do you need to win the game? 21? Perfect. Should have handed him the microphone. He's so much better at 20 than I am. All right, so the score is 11 all. And the game is over if a player gets to 21 or if the other player dropped to zero. Let's see how we do here. for that, but he doesn't lose any points. All right, 11-12. Oh. All right. The net is your first opponent. All right, here we go. That would be minus three, mate. I'm sorry. assistant coach and Frank's going to drop jump in and let's see what this looks like when we do yellow ball right so what's the score again Frank sorry about you down down 10 11 you just subbed in for uh, Stefan over here poor old Martin switching from orange to yellow that's interesting isn't it right minus one a little long 10 all interesting is let's see while they hit this while they do this rally if you guys can use some of that terminology we just discussed a minute ago so think about the anatomy of the ball which part of the ball are they hitting and can you tell what type of shot they're hitting so these guys can hear. So watch Frank hit the ball. Tell me if he's hitting. So that's interesting. Stefan said chin on all three of those. What do you guys think? What do you think? Can you hit the chin on this one? Yeah, what's that ball, Stefan? You got that? See if you can see the difference. Let's see the difference in this. the difference? Right. Frank, can you hit the nose on this one? Let's right, see if we get one in here. Let's see if we can hit the nose on this one. See the difference? 
So I think one of the things with young players, number one is obviously to help them develop a little bit better technical awareness, make it fun. Ah, that's interesting. So Stefan said it's kind of in the middle of the chin and the nose. That's a pretty good observation, right? So he's starting to think about the contact point. All right, come on back up here. Right, so that's a game called Not in the Nat. By the way, if, uh, if you didn't get the outline, I think it's in the outline, but if it's not, I'll uh, leave my cards at the end. And feel free to email me. I'll send you the, uh, the edited uh, outline for the talk. So one of the things we want to try and do today is to achieve these objectives, help us refine our roadmap for uh, junior player development. And all I'm trying to do is actually stimulate some good questions and conversation, because I want you guys to kind of be thinking about some things that might be of interest. Talk about some fundamentals that Stefan might be trying to work on so that eventually he can, uh, he can play at least as good as these guys, maybe a lot better, right? Yeah. He's going to be a lot better than you guys. Anyway, that's good. Like that. He said maybe. And then also just to talk about what's a healthy and, and fun way to actually help him get there so that you, uh, you still love the game. We love the game even more in 10 years than you love it right now, right? Yeah. Okay, so. Um, we are going to introduce another game, and this game is called Three in a Row. Okay, so in this game, can you jump back in again? Jump back in again? Right, so this game, I like this game because did any of you guys see the tiebreaker that Murray played with Djokovic? I was kind of happy about the outcome of that. <laughs> right, so well, I was thinking tiebreaker, it's always interesting in tiebreaker because I feel like it's a real momentum. Uh, game, you know, tiebreaker. And that game was interesting because those guys were just toe to toe, and honestly, I mean, it could go either way, right? Luckily, it didn't go that way. <laughs> so I like this three in a row because it really focuses play. It makes players focus and concentrate. So the, the game here is I'm going to feed the ball to Stefan, and if he can win three points in a row on the feed, he wins the game. If he loses a point before his third point, it's side out, and then the feed goes to Morton. All right, so that's very simple, right? Three in a row. That was close. close. We might have to, we might have, to uh, have a review on that one. All right, so Morton wins that point. We're going to give him a dodgy backhand, so I'm going to give him a backhand over here. That was a terrible feed, I'm sorry, Nick. Here you go. Okay, Martin's got two. <laughs> oh, well done, mate. Say that. So now you've won it back again. So in a tennis match, if players are winning just one or two points at a time, it's usually a fairly even match, right? Get a lot of 30 alls, a lot of 15 30s. Right, that was one to you, mate. Oh, I threw in a little slice there. So, uh, Stefan, what's your strategy? Do you have a strategy? <laughs> not really. What shots does he not like? He doesn't like the backhand. So what pattern do you think you might use to try and get it, get into his back end a little bit and make him miss? What numbers? Four and five. Okay, let's try that theory. Let's see if you're able to work him out a little bit. I know he's got a dodgy back end, so I would definitely pick on that. Ooh, that was perfect. Nine times out of ten, that's going in there. All right, so anyway, I mean, that, that's more about 
uh, kind of just a little bit improved tactical awareness, helping a player have a straight corner game. Let's start in the ad corner. Right, so a lot of times we want to try and create a tactical situation to help players develop good responses for these situations. So right here I'm going to put uh, Stefan in a little bit of a challenge challenge face here and he's going to come up with a good response. So here he goes, he's on the run. You know, we only just worked on that. <laughs> How good was that? Now, while we're doing this, guys, would you like to look at his stroke technique, his height of contact on the ball, and the length of the rallies? Because if we're trying to build a little bit of shot tolerance here and help him kind of, you know, build a knowledge of how to work his opponent over, I think uh, this, is, this is looking pretty good right now. I'm liking the way this looks. To, uh, we're playing first to seven, and I told him earlier, I had my dice with me earlier, I rolled the dice earlier, and I told him how everyone who's on the dice, that's the handicap he's going to get, and he got four. So right now you're up love four, mate. Right, love four, and if you get to seven before this guy, we'll have him do some push-ups or something. How about that? Ready? get that ball in. More spin. Okay, good. Like that. Good answer. Right, now, <laughs> interesting. I'm glad this happened, actually, because this happened earlier. Stefan, come on up to the net again. So, we did... Remember what I was saying earlier about finding technical solutions for tactical problems. So right now, we've, we've got a little bit of a tactical problem because Stefan keeps getting himself into a winning position at the net, but perhaps the volley has a little room for improvement. What do you think, mate? I mean, your forehand is awesome. You know that? Absolutely awesome. I wish I had a forehand like that. Somebody over there told me i got to work on my forehand. I think he's right. <laughs> All right, so let's have Martin come up here, and we'll show. But let's see if we can do a little technical work on your forehand. All right, remember the little drill we did? Remember the drill we did earlier? We just, uh, we just undo this. There we go. Make sure we don't ping that monkey over. All right, let's start in the middle. So we did a little drill earlier. We did kind of cheat. This is like Martha Stewart. You guys ever watch Martha Stewart? She's like, this is a, a cake that I baked half an hour ago. Yeah, yeah, anyway. All right, so we did this little drill to try and firm up the forehand. So you can volley to Martin. You ready? Here you go. All right, he's got a little, little short tape back over there. All right, let's, uh, Martin, can you hit a couple Let's work on the back. How do we work on the back end? Okay, okay. All right, back to me then. What do you think about that back end? Could it be a little firmer, do you think, or no? What do you think? Let's see if we can do one a little firmer. That looks a lot firmer. How about if you could squeeze and freeze? Can you do a squeeze and freeze? Show me a shadow swing. Oh, that looks good. Hey, you could be on like a, in a movie or something. 
the tennis community or something like that. All right, go ahead. Better? Still a bit patient. Nice. All right, let's get back into the game. And let's see if next time you get that chance to move up, if you can actually hit that winning volley man. All right, so hopefully we made a little bit of an improve on the, improvement on the technique there. Jump in, step on, take a take a I mean a water break. <laughs> Alright, let's do a quick corner to the corner of the backhand, Frank, because I, I saw you had a little doggy backhand as well over here. Let's throw your backhand. So put your right foot in the uh, each player to take one target. So Frank, go ahead and grab one of those targets. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna block off either one half of the front court or one half of the back court. So you guys can choose any part, any part of your court, like a service box or half of the back court, drop that in the middle and that part is out of bounds. So Martin, where are you going to, where are you going to pick yours? If I wanted to work on my backhand out here. Right. So he's blocked off the backhand <laughs> court. What? Oh, you've done the same. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. So we're, we're creating some variables already, right? So let's continue our three in the roll. And now that part of the court is out of play. Okay, if it hits the net, you lose the point. So it looks like both of you guys, your back and court is out of play. All right, one to Frank. Frank's, coming. Frank's trying to do a comeback over here. Uh-oh. Is it distracting? It's all distracting. <laughs> Alright, arms on one. Arms on one. it a little bit more challenging, I would I would maybe say, Martin, you want to block off maybe one of the maybe block off the, the opposite service box over here. Frank, you want to do the same? You can change it. If you want to change it, you can change it. You want to change it? So one half of that court and then you can have another one. You can do a you can do a service box as well. Yeah I mean that's totally fair. You can do the same, right? Right, and, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to throw in another variable, guys, and I'm going to say you can only use underspin. You can't use any top spin at all. You guys have a slice for him? You have one of those? You don't need it really, do you? Because you've set it up that way. Wait a minute, should have told you that before you set it up. <laughs> hey, mate. I know English isn't your first language, but did you hear what I said? Oh, that's quite good. So, interesting, if we just change up some of the variables. Because he's getting more silly, standing in the corner over there. So getting back to Stefan, if we talk about ball characteristics, let's play a couple more points. I mean, something going on while I'm talking. The five ball characteristics, and this is getting back to that great system I told you. I, I really like the few. Look at this. The five ball characteristics are 
speed, spin, height, depth, and direction. Right? Those are the five ball characteristics, right? So if we can teach young players to start developing each one of those five ball characteristics, but do it in a really fun game situation, um, and then obviously figure out what they can and cannot do. Okay, so knowing what a player can and cannot do um, will help us kind of target. I know what you need to work on, right? Good job. All right. So if he can hit that short angle, Martin's liking that short angle. Oh, here we go. What was the shot you should have hit here? Okay, good. That's, that's my question. That's my question. Last one. Match point, Frank. Nice shot. All right, that was like one more match point. I want to be more exciting than that. Nice, nice. All right, so we're going to move on. Quick round of round of applause for these two guys. Really good. Guys, if you want to drink the water real quick, don't go away because I need you back here in two minutes. Okay, Stefan, you want to warm up your serve? Um, let's have you start here. Serve to the ad court, and every time you make two in a row, yeah, I don't want those. Color one? Yeah. Oh. All right, Stefan, <laughs> just stand on this side. If you make two in a row, you can take a step back. And we worked on that the other day, right? All right, so if you, if you, make, if you make two in a row, take a step back. And then uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes, okay? Sometimes good to let kids do independent practice, right? Ball characteristics, speed, spin, height, depth, and direction. How's it going over there? Good? Can you uh, call the color that you're aiming at? Yellow. You know, in front of 300 of his peers on the first serve at school assembly about a month ago, called yellow and nailed it. And we found it on film, which is the most impressive thing. It's on YouTube somewhere, right? There. Don't hit me. Just don't use that later. Don't worry. That's for later. Are uh, you looking good? So let's uh, let's back it up a little bit. Let's let's move that basket over just a little bit. <laughs> right, you warmed up? Warmed up? All right, come on back to the baseline. So, Stefan, just in case you guys haven't picked this up, speaks fluent French. And uh, who's your favorite player, mate? Did you guys hear that? <laughs> I mean, he's... <laughs> Good job. <laughs> said anyway, but he's actually a good... You've seen Djokovic's first nations. There's nothing compared to what this guy can do. Right? So, can we see uh, the Gail Monfils, sir? Can you just give me a quick shadow of the Gail Monfils? What about uh, Joe Wilson's song that was that? Not bad, is it? It's not bad. All right. So, uh, tell you what. No pressure. But I'm going to give you three tries to call the color and hit it. And if you do, you definitely get that light contract. Not only with Adidas, but we'll do Wilson rackets as well. We'll just throw that in. Are you ready? Yeah, <laughs> 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 
three serve tennis. This is a great drill because uh, it actually gives you a little bit more scope to experiment with the serve since you have three of them. Um, and we, we actually have a special rule here that if you hit an ace serve, you automatically win the game. If you hit an ace return, you automatically win the game. But if you triple fault, you automatically lose the game. All right, so Martin, you got three balls? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to play, we'll play one quick no ad game here on your serve. That looked a little long. Yep. Oh dear. All right, so third serve. All right, good team up. Outside. <laughs> and that is one love, babe. All right. Martin. Martin. <laughs> Your serve, Martin. All right. <laughs> oh, that's a mini break. That's a mini break. Down love two. First break. Right, jump in here. <laughs> you're, you're out of it. 
Martin and Frank. This is for uh, this is for the first call of the bar. All right, Frank, your serve. Can I just tell you, Martin, I'm sandbagging. This guy is fast, man. Fast. All right, Marty, your serve.